My name is Sally Presnell. I'm a registered dietitian with Clinch Valley Health. March is National Nutrition Month, and this morning we're at our local Food City supermarket. We are here to guide you through the grocery store on a nutritional tour. The Nutrition Facts label should be your guide in making food selections through the grocery store. A Nutrition Facts label can oftentimes be overwhelming when you're looking at all the nutrients and the values on the Nutrition Facts label. Several things are extremely important that you look at. At the beginning and the top of the label, you're going to find the serving size, which dictates all the information that is listed below as far as the nutritional count. You're also going to see the kilocalories or the calories that are in that particular serving size. Down below, you're also going to find the different nutrients. You're going to find total fats, you're going to find fiber, you're going to find cholesterol, you're going to find sodium. You're also going to find carbohydrates and sugar content. All of these values are based on the serving size that's listed at the very top of the label. Another important factor at the top of the label is to look at the number of servings per label or per container. Each container may have one serving or it may have three, it may have five or six servings. If you consume the whole container, you may be consuming actually more than what the nutritional value is based upon. Percent of daily value is also a very important factor when we're looking at the nutritional label. Percent of daily value is based upon a 2,000 calorie diet. Most adults probably don't need a 2,000 calorie diet, but it is a guide that gives us a look at how much we're consuming during the day. We use the, nutri the percent of daily value when we're looking at several nutrients such as saturated fats and cholesterol. We will refer as we go through the grocery store to the Nutrition Facts label in helping you to identify certain foods that we may want to include, include or we may not want to include. Today we're going to start the grocery tour in the produce section. When you look around the produce section, what do we see? We see color. We see color, which means nutrients. Color means nutrients, it also means phytochemicals. Carotenoids, which are found in carrots, which are also found in red grapes. Lycopene, which is found in tomatoes. Flavonoids, which are found in onions and apples. All of these are phytochemicals. Phytochemicals mean preventive. Phytochemicals are disease preventive properties especially with our cancers. Several cancers today are identified as being prevented by including more phytochemicals in our diet. In the fruit and vegetable section, we encourage including at least one serving at each meal and snack. The fresher that our vegetables are, the, lower, the more they're gonna impact our heart health. The fresher the vegetables are and the fruits, you're gonna have more fiber, you're also gonna have less fat and also less sodium. When you're preparing your fruits and vegetables, we like to encourage that you steam them rather than overcooking them. By overcooking them, we lose a lot of the nutritional value. We lose the vitamins. We also lose a lot of the fiber during the cooking process. Serving size is also extremely important. You can have two potatoes. One potato has a five ounce, is a five ounce potato. The other potato is a 10 ounce potato. This potato has approximately 127 calories. This potato is approximately 215 calories. When we're looking at kilocalories, especially if we're trying to maintain weight or lose weight, calories can make a tremendous difference. Apples and other fruits are another example. This is a 10 ounce apple, this is a five ounce apple. You're looking at double the calories in this size compared to the calories in this size. So when you're filling your plate up and you're looking at a serving size, you have to be particularly careful not to overdo. Even though fruits and vegetables are low in calories, we still can acquire too many calories by picking the bigger portion sizes. We talked about the nutrition facts label. In the meat department, we're gonna be looking at the fats. We're also gonna be looking at the saturated fats and the cholesterol. Lean meat is defined as less than 10 grams of fat, less than 4.5 grams of saturated fat, less than 95 milligrams of cholesterol in a three ounce portion. Most Americans could, should consume per day around six to seven ounces of meat. Meat is something that most people enjoy. Meat doesn't have a lot of carbohydrates, which a lot of people are concerned about when they're looking at diabetes. But we also have to look at the total amount of calories that we consume in a day. Meat can add a huge portion of calories to your plate if you're not aware of the portion sizes that you're actually consuming. A three ounce portion of meat typically will fit into the palm of your hand and be about the same thickness as your hand. That is a cooked portion of meat. Today we're looking at the processed meats. When we look at a slice of bacon, bacon has approximately nine grams of fat per serving, which is one slice, and approximately 370 milligrams of sodium. 
If I consume approximately four to six slices of bacon a day, I have acquired close to the amount of fat that I need for the whole entire day. Sodium is another part of bacon that we look at, and in one average slice of bacon, we have approximately 400 milligrams of sodium. Sodium is another nutrient that we'll be referring to on the Nutrition Facts label. For an average day, most Americans should consume around 2,400 milligrams of sodium per day. One slice of bacon has around 400 milligrams of sodium. Six slices of bacon give me my total sodium content that I need for the day. Better options and better choices are like our turkey bacon. Turkey bacon drops to approximately 2.5 grams of fat per slice compared to the 9 grams in the regular bacon. The sodium is approximately the same, but you can buy lower sodium bacon, which drops almost half of the sodium content from the regular slice of bacon. Another processed meat that we consume on a regular basis is hot dogs. Again, we have higher fat hot dogs, we have lower fat hot dogs. A regular ballpark hot dog has around 15 milligrams of, sod or 15 milligrams of fat. Our turkey hot dogs have approximately six grams of fat per hot dog, so almost half the quantity of this one. Sodium is another um, content of hot dogs that we have to pay attention to, especially if we're trying to follow a heart healthy diet. Another better choice in place of pork bacon would be our Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon has approximately 1.5 grams of fat, or 2.5 grams per fat, in a two ounce serving. Most servings of Canadian bacon, or most servings of bacon, is one ounce. So this would be giving you two ounces compared to one slice of bacon. It also has less than one gram of saturated fat, which we're going to be talking about also. I want to point out another very important part and a symbol that you want to look for when you're grocery shopping. It's the American Heart Check. The American Heart Association has begun to label things that meet certain criteria for heart health. And on food labels that have the certified American Heart Association Heart Check, those are foods that you might want to include in your, in your grocery cart. Healthy Ones um, Deli Meats have the American Heart Association Heart Check. This means that they're lower in fat, they're lower in sodium, they're also lower in saturated fats. Certain things, um, especially in our grains department, we may find the American Heart Association Heart Check on higher fiber foods. If you're interested in what foods qualify under the American Heart Association Heart Check, you can visit the American Heart Association website and look for Heart Check and it will give you a list of foods which you can find in your local grocery store that will have the American Heart Association Heart Check. In the meat department, what we're concerned about is the amount of saturated fats and the amount of cholesterol that you find in the foods that you eat. When you're looking at a piece of meat, you visibly cannot see the amount of cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually in the muscle part of the red part of the meat. The white part of the meat is the saturated fats. Saturated fats are one of your major leading causes of heart disease. The higher cuts of meat are going to have um, more saturated fats, more cholesterol than your lower cuts of meat. Your lower cuts of meat are going to have less fat. We all know that fat adds flavor and tenderness to our meat, so we have to learn how to prepare our foods to add flavor to them by marinating, by seasoning your foods, by fixing them in a manner which you're adding moisture to the meats rather than taking moisture out of the meats. The moisture provides more tenderness, provides more um, uh, texture to the food than when we prepare the meats that are going to make them tough. You can also look at the price difference between your higher cuts of meat and your lower cuts of meat. Back here we have a prime New York strip, which is a high price, high cut of meat. Look at all of the marbling and all of the fat in the prime New York strip and the ribeye steak. Next to it you see your top sirloin, which has very lean, has very little saturated fats, is very lean, has very little marbling. Compared to $7.99, $16.99, and $12.99. Your leaner meats are going to be of a price value compared to your higher cuts of meat, which are also going to be higher in saturated fats and higher in cholesterol. When we're purchasing hamburger meat or ground beef, one of the best things to do is to stand back from the meat counter and look at the color of your meat. The color of your meat dictates how, especially in your ground meat, dictates how much fat it is. The redder the meat is, the leaner it's going to be. In this package of ground beef, it's 75% lean, 25% fat. In our, this package of meat, you have 93% lean and 7% fat. 
Coming up, looking at it closely, you can tell there's a, a big difference in the color. The, the leaner meat is much redder. The one with the more saturated fats is going to be in the pinker color. When you prepare your meats, especially like your hamburger meat for soups or for tacos or for sloppy joes, always cook your meat, drain it, and then rinse it. Put it in your sink in a colander and pour boiling hot water over it. You'll wash even more of the fat off of the meat. Then adding your seasonings and your flavors will give your flavor back to your food where you've washed all of the fat off of the meat. We've all heard that using more white meats in our diet is a heart healthy diet. However, we still have to take into consideration that the skin of the chicken is a major portion of saturated fats. In this container of chicken, we have the skin on. The skin adds approximately 10 grams of fat, whereas in this package, it's boneless, skinless, and it only has approximately one gram of fat. We always want to take the skin off of the chicken if we purchase the container that has the, the skin on the chicken. Take it off before preparing, again, because if it's left on there during the process, then the fat will cook into the lean portion of the meat. Fatty fish is one of the things that the American Heart Association recommends that we include at least two servings per week. Salmon, mackerel, tuna are all high in the omega-3 fatty acids. So we really would like to include at least two servings of these per day. Grilling, baking, broiling, not frying our foods or not frying our fish because we would just be adding more fats to that fish. The dairy aisle is a major source of carbohydrates, a major source of protein, calcium, and potassium, and magnesium. Potassium is thought to be a mineral that is helping to prevent high blood pressure. So including dairy products can actually increase your potassium intake during the day. Our recommended intake per day of dairy products is three servings per day. All of these servings should be low in fat. In the dairy section, we're looking for zero trans fats. Trans fats are um, another fat that we find on the Nutrition Facts label. Our daily intake of trans fats from any foods should be zero. When you're comparing food labels in the dairy section, you want to look at the trans fats. You also want to look at the saturated fats. We're trying to stay under two grams of saturated fats. It is a very difficult aisle to find things that are low in fat. There are fat-free products that you can purchase, but again, you need to read that label carefully because fat-free doesn't always mean calorie-free. You have to look at the, when we're looking again at our waistline, when we're looking at our total daily intake of calories, you have to include all calories and where they come from. Light is another option that you can look for. Light has half of the calories in this, these two containers of sour cream the regular sour cream has five grams of fat per two tablespoons, whereas the light sour cream has, two, has 40 calories and 2.5 grams of fat. So the fat has been reduced by half. Another area that patients that, are, um, that have diabetes have to be careful with, when you take all the fat out of products, oftentimes we increase the carbohydrate content. Fat again is flavor, so when you take the flavor out, they've got to put flavor back some way. So oftentimes the carbohydrate content goes up in foods. With this particular product, the carbohydrate content is one gram. The, in the light product, it goes up to two grams. So that's an example of where your carbohydrates actually can increase when they take the fat out of products. Yogurt is another product that many of us have begun to enjoy. Yogurt gives us calcium. Yogurt comes in two different varieties, which the more recognized product now is the Greek yogurt. We're all trying to increase protein in our, in our diets because protein is a, is a satisfaction food. Protein takes longer to digest, so it helps you stay fuller for a longer period of time. So yogurt is a good option for giving us additional protein. Greek yogurt has twice as many grams of protein as your regular yogurt. But again, yogurt can be anywhere from 80 calories all the way up to 200 calories per serving. So again, shop, look at your labels, find the one that meets your nutritional needs the best. Cheese is another area where you can find a tremendous amount of grams of fat. You can also find a tremendous amount of saturated fats. Looking at those labels, we're trying to select ones that have less than two grams of saturated fat. I'll tell you, the aisle of cheese is a very difficult aisle to be able to find things that are low in fat. The fat-free cheeses are acceptable to some people, some people they're not acceptable. So looking for reduced fat cheeses is oftentimes a better option. Um, in your sliced American cheese that has 2%, that's made from 2% milk, 
you have a total fat grams of three, whereas in the regular sliced American cheese, there's four grams of, of cheese, four grams of fat per slice. Oftentimes we recommend using like your cheddar cheese, even though it's a higher fat product, but you can use less, less of it for the same amount of flavor. Use the sharper, use the more strong cheese, and you'll use less of it, but you'll have the same amount of flavor in using the, the higher fat product. When you look at the margarine containers, there's so many facts that they put on here. Many of them make health claims on them. For instance, I can't believe it's butter. We all know that um, olive oil is a, is a better product and we encourage using olive oil. So this one is including olive oil. Um, on your Smart Balance, it tells you that healthy cholesterol levels, it supports healthy cholesterol levels. It also talks about um, the cooking process on here. On the Move Over Butter, it tells you that it's made with sweet cream, it has no hydrogenated oils, it has zero trans fats. Again, we want zero trans fats. When you're buying margarine, you also want to, again, have less than two grams of saturated fats um, in your product. Remember when they're making, with a margarine, when they're making claims, they're claiming it against butter. Butter is extremely high in saturated fat. Butter also has a higher cholesterol content. Margarine is made from an oil, and they put it through a process called hydrogenation. The harder that your fats are, the harder that they are on your, on your health. So we wanna choose fats that are softer and don't, has, don't have as much hydrogenated fats in them. When you look at the move over butter and you look at the nutritional content, it has 1.5 grams of saturated fats. It has a total of six grams of fat. Here's an area where you can also look at the percentage of daily values when you're looking at the margarines. We try to stay under eight to 10% of saturated fats and your move over butter has 8%. This one is promoting that it's butter, but it also has canola oil blended into it. Canola oil is a monounsaturated fat, which we encourage using canola oil. But when we look at the nutritional label on the back, the, the Smart Balance butter has 20% saturated fats. Again, we're trying to stay under eight to 10%. It has four grams of saturated fat, and we're trying to stay at two grams of saturated fat. Blue Bonnet Tub has 1.5 grams of saturated fats. It has 8% of daily value. But I take the sticks, which is the same product, but it's in a stick, it's in a stick container. It has 2.5 grams of saturated fats, 13% of your daily value. There are some foods that we have to use stick margarine in, and that is acceptable, but we don't want to use this on a day-to-day -day basis. I would want to use the tub margarine because the tub margarine has much less saturated fats. It also has a higher, a lower percentage of daily value when it comes to your saturated fats. The other one that we oftentimes have a question about is the spray butters. Spray butters have 0% fats. They have no, no calories, no fats. Um, they do provide flavor. There's certain foods that you would want to use these on. There's certain things that they're not going to be really palatable on. Your squeeze margarine has a lot less of saturated fats also. Your saturated fats in this is 1.5, but your percent of daily value goes down to 7%. Your tub that we just spoke with had 10%. The stick margarine had 13%. One of the areas of the Nutrition Facts label that we haven't mentioned is the ingredient list. Ingredients on a Nutrition Facts label are listed by proportion. Your first ingredient is your number one ingredient, and as the ingredient list goes further on down the line, your ingredients get to be less. And we're going to look at two different containers of juices that are available. You want to make sure that your juice is 100% natural juice. You can do this by looking at the ingredient label. In this particular product, it has on the front Minute Made Original 100% orange juice. When you look at the ingredient list, the very first ingredient is 100% orange juice. This one says Minute Made Premium Peach Punch. Because it has the punch, a lot of times it'll say like 5% juice blend. But when you look at the ingredient list, the very first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is one of our major additives for sugars. Beverages can be extremely high in sugars, 
Beverages can be nutrient rich, but they can also have a lot of empty calories. So you want to make sure that when you're purchasing your beverages that you get things that are giving you good nutrition, such as vitamins and minerals, and it's not just adding sugar to your diet. Eggs are a vital part of our diet. Eggs are used in our baking, but we also consume eggs throughout the day. The major nutrient that we find in eggs that we have to be careful with is cholesterol. The American Heart Association recommends our daily intake of cholesterol be approximately 300 milligrams. The yellow of the egg is a major cholesterol containing product. One egg yolk in most eggs contains 215 to 220 milligrams of cholesterol. Today the American Heart Association recommends approximately three egg yolks per week. Egg whites are the protein of the egg and egg whites contain no fats and no cholesterol. A trick that we've taught patients for years is if I want a larger quantity of eggs to use one whole egg and take the whites off of several eggs. Patients always ask about egg beaters. Egg beaters are 100% cholesterol free, saturated fat free. Um, egg beaters are actually made from egg whites. They take the egg whites and they pasteurize them. So you can get the same value out of buying a, a dozen fresh eggs and separating the eggs yourself. Um, or for convenience, you may want to buy the egg beaters. Oils and fats, again, are a very concentrated source of calories. So you want to make sure that even though you use a very good oil, that you're not using it for a frying process. When you prepare your foods, we want fat to come out of it. We don't want to put fat back into it. When you read your nutrition facts label, you're going to see different types of fats. You've got monounsaturated fats, you have polyunsaturated fats, you have saturated fats, and you have trans fats. All four of those are usually listed under your total grams of fats. Monounsaturated fats are the ones that we encourage using more of. Monounsaturated fats are found in things like your olive oil and also in your canola oil. Both of these are extremely good sources of monounsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats help to lower your LDLs, which are your lower density lipoproteins, which are your bad fats that lead to heart disease. Canola oil is from a grain. Canola oil is very similar to your vegetable oils. With your canola oil, you have um, one gram of saturated fats, you have four grams, or excuse me, nine grams of monounsaturated fats. With your olive oil, again, there's two grams of saturated fats. Monounsaturated fats are 10 grams. Many of us were raised and we were brought up on corn oil and vegetable oil. Corn oil and vegetable oil are what we call polyunsaturated fats. Not bad, but not good. Polyunsaturated fats will lower your LDLs, those bad fats in your bloodstream, but they also lower your good fats, your HDLs. We don't want to do anything to disrupt or to lower our high density lipoproteins. Again, when we look at the saturated fat content, there's two grams and there's also two grams in these. Your, remember your canola oil had only one gram of saturated fats. When we look at the monounsaturated fats, good fats. This one only has three, this one has four, but your canola oil and your olive oil had nine grams and 10 grams of monounsaturated fats. The harder that your fats get, the more saturated fat content. What we have here is we have Crisco shortening and we also have lard. Crisco shortening is made from oil, usually vegetable oils, and on the very front it says all vegetable. But when you look at the saturated fat content, 3.5 grams compared to your one gram in your oils. With your lard, there's five grams of saturated fat compared to the three grams of these. These are two things that we truly recommend should never go into your grocery cart. These are items that are a major contributing factor to cardiovascular disease. Cereal and pasta and grains are one of our main sources of carbohydrates in our diet. They are also rich in vitamin Bs, an essential nutrient to good health. They're also a major source of fiber, but we really have to pay again close attention to that nutrition facts label. Oats are high in soluble fiber. Soluble fiber helps reduce the cholesterol by binding with the cholesterol and removing it from the body. When you're shopping in the grocery, in the section for your cereals, you always want to try to find a cereal that has at least three grams of dietary fiber. We would like to have higher amounts of dietary fiber, but the minimum is three grams of dietary fiber. We aim for at least three servings of whole grains from our foods each day. When you look at the frosted mini wheats, frosted mini wheats in a serving size has 
six grams of dietary fiber. When we look at our sugar-coated cereals, our Frosty Flakes, one gram of dietary fiber. In your oatmeal, when we look at the total dietary fiber, there's four grams of total grams of dietary fiber. So your oats have a higher amount of dietary fiber compared to your Frosted Flakes, but your mini wheats also have the highest amount of dietary fiber. Fiber helps with reducing our risks of colon cancer. Fiber also helps with cardiovascular help, health. Fiber is also something that helps you stay fuller for a longer period of time. So a breakfast that has a great value of dietary fiber is help you gonna stay fuller for a longer time until lunch. The, the more fiber that foods have, the slower the foods turn into glucose. So it also helps with dietary management of diabetes. Bread and grains, again, we're looking for fiber. We're looking to make sure that when you buy bread, that you buy bread that is made out of whole wheat flour. The very first word in that list is whole wheat. Again, we're looking at the ingredient list on your nutrition facts label. I have a variety of breads here. This one says two, two times the dietary fiber. This one says 100% made out of whole grain. And then our Sarah Lee says white made with whole grains. So when patients see this whole white bread made with whole wheat or made with whole grains, we think this is a really healthy bread and it tastes like white bread. And it truly is white bread. When you look at the ingredients on this particular label, the very first ingredient says enriched wheat flour. It doesn't say anything about whole grains. On our nature zone, it says 100% whole wheat. And when I look on the ingredient list, the very first flour says um, enriched whole wheat flour. It's made from the whole grains. This particular loaf has two grams of dietary fiber. In our nature zone, two times the fiber, it's gone from two grams to four grams per slice. This is another thing in the bread aisle that you have to pay particular attention to is the serving size because many breads will list their serving size as two slices. Remember that on the Nutrition Facts label, that is for the serving size. So if it says it has two grams of dietary fiber, but the serving size is two slices, that means each slice only has one gram of dietary fiber. We would really like to reach two to four grams of dietary fiber per slice of whole wheat bread. This is another one that a lot of our patients who are managing their diabetes look at and they say it's sugar-free. Sugar-free oftentimes to a diabetic means that that's gonna be good for me. Sugar-free does not mean carbohydrate-free. Carbohydrates are the main nutrient that influence a person's blood sugars. So I look at this label of bread and I'm thinking, okay, that's a better choice for me. Bread does not have a lot of sugar in it. So it has zero grams of sugar, but it still has nine grams of carbohydrate. Whereas with my nature's own, only has one gram of sugar and also has 11 grams of carbohydrate. So pretty much both of those breads are equal. I might buy this thinking that I'm making a better choice for my diabetes, but I'm getting carbohydrates, which again, are going to influence my blood sugars. Thanks for joining us today on our nutrition tour. I hope you've learned and gained some valuable information from what we've provided to you. There's many other things that we haven't touched on today. The Nutrition Facts label could be a class in itself. There's many foods and items that we haven't touched on. If you have questions or concerns, you can always consult your primary care provider or contact us at Clinch Valley Health. We'll be glad to answer questions that you have.